الله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أوتيت من شيء فمتاع الحياة الدنيا وزينتها وما عند الله خير وأبقى أفلا تعقلون Yesterday I recited this ayah before you We talked a little bit about entrepreneurship and people that are uh, that assume that their work leads to success in whatever form So today I wanted to share with you the ayah itself and the reality of worldly acquisitions What does a person acquire in this world of anything? Uh, well, it's not even reduced. The matter is not reduced to just wealth. So Allah says, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And whatever you've been given of any sort of thing. أُوْتِيْتُمْ The utia, utia is that active or passive? Majhul, right? What's the na'ibu al-fa'il? أُوْتِيْتُمْ Na'ibu al-fa'il, let me use مُتَّصِلْ تَبْنِيرُهُ I said مُتَّصِلْ because تُمْ at the end, right? But briefly, you've been given something. As opposed to saying, فَمَا لَكُمْ Whatever you have, مِنْ شَيْءٍ Whatever you have in, وَمَا عِنْدَكُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Whatever you have in your possession. He says, whatever you've been given of anything. The statement already acknowledges that it's not yours. It's been given to you. Whatever you have has been given to you. It isn't actually genuinely your possession. Then he adds, فَمَا تَعْوَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Then, whatever that is, if you reach that conclusion, know it's just a means to enjoy worldly life. فَمَا تَعْوَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Mut'a in Arabic means two things, utilization and enjoyment. It's two, two pieces of meaning to the word mut'a. And so mata'ul hayat dunya on the one hand means something to enjoy temporarily. On the other hand, it means something to utilize. So mata' could be food, and mata' could also be the spoon. Now nobody enjoys a spoon, but they certainly what? They certainly use it. So a spoon can become a mata' also. Things that you have to put to work. Wazinatuha. In addition to mata, it's also a means by which wor worldly life is beautified. It's its beauty. Wazinatuha. So two khabars. You know, mata al hayat al dunya wazinatuha. Wa ma inda Allahi khayrun wa abqa. Now look, our possession was compared to Allah's possession. Our possession was described ma utitum. Whatever you've been given. Allah's possession wa ma inda Allahi. And whatever belongs to Allah, whatever Allah has. And inda actually, if you you know, remember the comparison between lam and inda. Allah says, not for himself too, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَذَوْا But in this ayah he says, وَمَا Not وَمَا لِلَّهِ But he says, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عِنْدَ actually is for qurb, for closeness. So, if I'm أَنَا عِنْدَك I mean, I'm right by your side. الْإِمَامُ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ He's right by the masjid. So, عِنْدَ is not just for possession, it's also for closeness. Whatever Allah has, of course, whatever you have is also Allah's. So what's he referring to whatever Allah is? Whatever is close to Allah right now, but by definition it is far from you. I mean the Jannah he has for you, the rewards he has for you, the, the eternal life he has for you, the things he has that are closer to him right now than they are to you. You're still in the worldly, in worldly things. And what's beautiful about the word inda in comparison to the word dunya, dunya also is the superlative form of adna. In dunya, worldly life is actually the lowest life, one meaning of it is lowest, al hayat al dunya and also means closest. This is closest to you right now for you to enjoy, it's been given to you, but what I have in my possession, khayrun wa abqa, is better and lasts longer. Now, khayr and abqa are both comparative words, and this will be the last piece of like, uh, reflection I want to share with you guys. Khayrun wa abqa are both comparative, they're both ism tafdi. Whenever you use the word comparison, then you're really putting one thing against another. That's what you're doing. So Allah is forcing us to compare things we have here with things that He still has in His possession awaiting us. I have life here, I'll have life there. I have energy here, I'll have energy there. I have enjoyment here, I'll have enjoyment there. I have food here, I'll have food there. I have a house here, I'll have a house there. There's a comparison. But when you make that comparison, just remember one thing. Every time you use something here, remember there's something to be compared with that where? In Akhira. Something you find good, something you find enjoyable, and something you find beautiful here, constantly this imprint in your mind there's something of the, this that is that has two qualities in Jannah. Number one is khair, is better. I'm eating food, it's delicious, I remind myself there's food in Jannah and it's better. I have I enjoy myself doing something. I play a game, I enjoy company, I have a good time. I see a beautiful scene. I say this scene is beautiful, but what Allah has is Better. This is a khayr. This is wa ma'indallahi khayrun. This has to be imprinted in the mind of a believer. When they enjoy good things. This is great, but there's way better. The second quality Allah adds is wa abqa. We did baqiya yabqa pretty recently. What does it yabqa mean? To remain. To remain. Abqa, 
Al khairu abqa wa in tala zamanu bihi this morning. What does abqa mean? To last longer. The second comparison constantly, where all things that are beautiful and enjoyable in this world. What's the constant comparison? Whatever Allah has lasts longer. Longer than this. I'm walking into my house. You know? Walk into the house. I just, I'm looking at the house and I'm going, oh, this is nice. Alhamdulillah. But there's another house and that lasts longer than this. This won't last. By definition, you start thinking things here won't last. I love spending time with my children. But the company, the family Allah will give me in, J in Jannah, these children, may Allah return them to me in Jannah, but they're better and that, that company, that time lasts longer. You know, there are moments at, at times in, in your life where you're with people you love and you're really enjoying yourself and you want it to last forever. Or sometimes husband and wife get into a fight and they get over it and then they're together and they're happy with each other and they turn to each other and say, why can't every day be like this? Why can't it just say like this? That's the time to remind yourself, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ wa Whatever Allah is, is better. better. It's going to be better happiness than this and it's going to last. It's not going to go away. Because even when we have happy times in the back of our head, what are we thinking? Man, this, I mean, spring is here but fall's coming. You know? You're always thinking as another, another day where it's going to pass and then bad times are ahead. Why, then, why don't you apply, exercise your intellect then? Literally the question at the end of this ayah is, think about this. Why aren't you thinking? Why aren't you engaged in, in real thought about this constantly? SubhanAllah. And if that happens, then you know, nobody gets confused about what real success means. What real, nobody gets deluded into thinking they've acquired a lot in this world, or what they've acquired means something significant. It means nothing then. And they're constantly thinking, this will go, just like I will go, and what Allah has is better and longer lasting. Those two words capture the essence of a believer in the Akhirah, especially in Jannah. وما عند الله خير وأبقى أفلا تعقلون بارك الله لي ولك في القرآن الحكيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وبالحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته